Hi everybody, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, look at the uh, problems from 6.4. Uh, most of the problems are pretty similar in this section, so I think we can jump right on in and uh, just do one of them. Okay, so let me jump in here. Um, we'll look at the first question, I think that should be fine. Okay, so there's a bit of a review here of what we covered in 6.4. So. Um, I'm just going to read through this. It says, in a population of values x with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, we wish to compute a sample mean from a sample of size n. The collection of all possible sample means x bar from samples of size n is the sampling distribution for this statistic. We know the following about this sampling distribution. Okay, so center, the mean of sample means is the mean of the population we're sampling from. Okay, uh, the shape, the distribution of sample means is approximately normal if either the sample size is bigger than 30 or the population we're sampling from is normal. One of the two criteria must be met for approximate normality. And then spread the standard error or standard deviation for sample means is just sigma sub x bar, and that's sigma over the square root of n. Okay, so the question here says, suppose we gather a sample size of 52 um, from a population with a mean of 44.1 and a standard deviation of sigma equals 4.2. So first of all, are the criteria for approximate normality satisfied? And the only information we're given is that the sample size is 52. The rule is it has to be bigger than 30 up here which we do have, so we'll say yes, the criteria are satisfied, not because the population were, is normal that we're sampling from, but because our sample size is bigger than 30. That's all you need for that, one of the two. Okay, so there's the first thing. A bunch more questions here. So now it says give the mean of all sample means. Okay, so what we've learned is that the mean of sample means, that's mu sub x bar is equal to the mean of the population we're sampling from. And looking at the problem here, uh, the mean, where is it? Um, okay, the mean is 44.1. So we can just put that down here, 44.1, and that's all you really need to do to get the mean. Okay. Standard deviation is a little bit more work. Um, so for the standard deviation of sample means here, uh, the formula is you take the standard deviation from the population you're sampling from and divide by the square root of your sample size. So um, I'll go ahead and put this here. Sigma x bar is equal to sigma, standard deviation from the population we're sampling from, divide by the square root of it. And so our population's standard deviation is 4.2 right here. So we'll put 4.2 over square root of n, and n is our sample size here, which is 52. Okay, so um, what we need to do is just get our calculator going here. So. We'll do a fraction with 4.2 on top. And in the bottom, we'll do the square root of 52, our sample size. So that's 0.58. Now this thing wants it to how many places? Three places after the decimal. So we're going to go 582. Okay. And I think we'll check our answer here. Way down. Just making sure everything's okay. Yeah, so our mean's good, our standard deviation's good. Now we have a probability to do. Um, the means are normally distributed, so we can use the uh, normal distribution on this. So um, we are going to do the probability 
that x bar, a random sample mean, is greater than uh, 45.5. Okay, so but as always, uh, probabilities like this for normal distributions have to be converted to z-scores. Okay, so um, to do that z-score, um, I think I can go right here. We're taking a z-score of a sample mean, so that's x-bar, and you need to subtract the mean of sample means and divide by the standard deviation of the standard error of sample means. So that's the idea on this. So um, the boundary value we're using is this 45.5, and the mean of sample means was 44.1, and then dividing by that standard deviation or standard error, 0.582, Okay, so let's do that real quick. Um, so 45.5 um, minus 44.1 over uh, 0.582. And uh, we always round z-scores to two places after the decimal, so we'll call this, uh, what is it, 2.41. So we want a z-score to be bigger than 2.41 here. Now greater than uh, probabilities, you always have to do 1 minus, so I'm going to write down 1 minus and then we have to look up 2.41. This is a normal probability, which is table A1. Uh, so let me just kind of bring this down and find table A1 here. Okay, so here's 2.4 and 0.01. We're able to use the normal distribution for because the the conditions for normal probabilities uh, were met. That was the sample size needed to be bigger than 30. Okay, so it's 0 0.9920 here. And so let's go ahead and just put that in. Okay, so 1 minus 0 0.9920. And so that's 0 0.0080. Okay, and I think we're ready to put in the rest of the answers here. So first that z-score was um, 2.41. And I'm going to check these as I go. Okay, so we're good there. And then we want z bigger than, um, you know, for 45.5, x bar to be bigger than 45.5 is the same as z to be bigger than 2.41. So we'll just kind of translate that, that down here. And in the end, the probability, uh, because if it was greater than, we did the rule of complements, and we got 0 0.0080. Okay, and we'll check again. And then the next thing is we have to sort of determine whether this is unusual or statistically significant. So first we're using a z-score to state whether the sample mean is unusually high. Um, z-score is 2.40, and so that's more than two standard deviations above the mean. So because the z-score, here this one, because the z-score is greater than or equal to 2, the sample mean is unusual, and in this case unusually high. So we'll pick that. And then, so that's one way to determine unusualness. Um, another way is to, uh, uh, to determine unusualness um, is to determine whether it's statistically significant. It's really the same thing. Um, so uh, one way we can do this is to look at the probability. So another way to decide if a sample mean is statistically significant is to look at the probability of a random sample being at least as extreme as the one you have. So our sample mean was 45.5, and the probability of getting that or more we just did was 0 
One rule is to say that if the probability is less than 5% or 0.05, then the value is statistically significant. Okay, so it says use the normal probability we computed to determine it. So the 0 0.0080, you would round this to 0 0.01, which is 1%. 1% is less than 5%. And again, if that probability is less than 5%, then the value is significant. We've got 0 0.008, which is 0 .0, rounds to 0 0.01. And we can say, yes, it's less than 5%. So it is statistically significant. We've got 8 out of 8 here. And it's all good to go.